What is going on guys? I'm back and today we're going to be doing some educational content. So today I'm going to be talking about my six greatest 1v1 tips. I know you probably know if you've played a lot of 1v1s, you know it can get really tilting at times. Just because a lot of the times if you make one small little mistake, then the opponent will score on you. So yeah, I know 1v1s can be a pain at times, but it is without a doubt the best way to get better. Because if you play a ton of 1v1s over time, you not only improve your mechanics, but you improve your overall game sense. And you can kind of teach yourself when to challenge the ball and what you do in certain situations. And overall, it just really helps you get better as a player. I remember I used to play a ton of 1v1s when I was on Xbox, and playing so many 1v1s when I was just starting helped me get to where I am today. 1v1s don't necessarily teach you speed, but they give you a really good foundation, and once you get that foundation built, then you can increase your speed of play from there. So 1v1s aren't necessarily the most fun game mode, but it is the best game mode to improve as a player as quickly as you can. So I'm going to be giving you tips to get better at the best way to get better. I think that actually does make sense. So the first tip I have is picking up the small 12 boost pads. And I know a lot of people mention this, but there's a reason everyone mentions it. Because it's a good tip. I'm mainly talking about the situations where the opponent has possession of the ball and you don't have much boost. So let's say the opponent has taken a lot of shots on you and you're really low on boost. Now you could go all the way to your corner boost, but a lot of the time, if you have a good opponent, you won't have enough time to go all the way to your corner boost and go all the way back to your goal to save their shot. So in these situations, you definitely want to be picking up the small 12 boost pads, but you don't want to go too far out of your way because you still want to be able to save their shot if they shoot it at you. A little tip I like to use is memorizing my 12 times tables. So like 12, 24, 36, 48, and so on. So you can stay focused on the game and just know in your head how much boost you have picked up without actually having to look and see how much boost you have. Okay, so I don't know if you knew this or not, but you can actually save any shot with only 12 boosts, but I usually try to get at least 24 to 36 boosts, which is 2 or 3 boost pads if I have enough time. Okay, so pretend I just saved the ball. A specific path I like to take is getting this one, this one, and then this one. So you should end up on the side of the goal and ready to save another shot with somewhere around 36 boosts, which is more than enough than you need. And from there, try to conserve as much boost as you can and also try to buy yourself as much time as you can to pick up more boost. Another situation where it'll be better to pick up boost pads rather than go all the way back to your boost is when the opponent just got possession and you and the opponent are both in his half. And this kind of leads into my next tip as well. So you just lost possession and you and the opponent are both in his half. A lot of the times going all the way back to your boost or even to mid boost will give the opponent a free dribble so what you can do is pick up a few boost pads and quickly turn and challenge the ball if the opponent doesn't have it on top of his car yet this allows you to keep pressure on the ball instead of going back to your own boost and letting the opponent have a free dribble and if you do it quickly enough it may catch the opponent off guard and you may get a goal out of it I couldn't think of a better name for it but the second tip is getting hits to buy you time this is extremely important in 1v1s and I haven't really heard anyone talk about it okay so this one's a pretty broad topic and it's kind of hard to explain so I'm just gonna go over some examples okay this might just like a completely normal play and it is a normal play but I'm just gonna explain what I was doing here so what I'm talking about is when your opponent kind of loses control of the ball but there's nothing you can really do with it so you just kind of hit the ball in a spot that makes it way harder for them and it buys you time to either get in a better position or get boost okay so right here you can see that if I don't touch the ball at all he'll probably get an attack started up but pretty much anything I do to try to start my own attack he'll block it right away because of where he is so the sole purpose of this hit is to make the ball in a harder position for him to deal with and it also allows me time to grab boost and you can see since the ball barely bounced off the wall like that that he didn't get control of the ball and it allowed me time to challenge the ball and score a goal okay I'm gonna show another example of this against one of my friends King Ranny You can see right here that neither one of us have control of the ball yet, and we both don't have much boost. And I hit it above his car where it bounces off the wall a little bit, and there's absolutely nothing he can do with that hit, so that allows me time to get boost and start an attack, and I scored because of it. Okay, so that one was really hard to explain, but I've never seen anyone try to explain that before, and it's really important. So I'm gonna summarize it by saying, when your opponent is just about to gain possession of the ball, but doesn't have full control of it yet, try to get an annoying hit on the ball that puts you in a better position and him in a worse position, so he doesn't have a chance to dribble towards your goal. Tip number three is perfecting the fake challenge, and more specifically knowing when and when not to challenge the ball. If you can consistently do really good fake challenges in 1v1s, it'll help your game improve so much. A fake challenge is where you act like you're going to go for the ball, but at the last second you don't go for the ball and turn and start shadowing your opponent's movements. So in tip two, I was talking about trying to get an annoying hit to prevent the opponent from getting the ball on top of their car, but if the opponent already has full possession of the ball and the ball is on their hood of the car, you probably want to do a fake challenge. So instead of full 
people out rushing the opponent, you can act like you're gonna rush the opponent and turn and try to save their shot, which is much safer than challenging the ball when they already have it on top of their car. So the goal of a fake challenge is to make the opponent think you're going for the ball so they do something like a flick or a power shot right away without having much time to set it up. So you're essentially baiting them to do an offensive move against you. And after you drive up to the ball to do the fake challenge, you want to turn and get into a shadowing position. And a shadowing position is basically being on the same side of the field as your opponent and mirroring his movements while driving towards your near post to block the shot. I know that may sound confusing for now, so if you want to watch a full in-depth video I made on when to challenge the ball and how to get in that shadowing position, you can go ahead and click the card at the top right of your screen right now, or you can wait until after watching the video and the link will be in the description. Before we get into tip number four, I wanted to give a huge shout out to the guy that comments I like cheese on all my videos. For some reason, YouTube likes to flag most of your comments, but I appreciate you. I appreciate that you like cheese. So moving on to tip four, which is looking at the opponent more and thinking like him. I'm talking about when you're on offense and you have possession of the ball. So instead of doing what you normally do, just dribbling the ball, trying to get a flick or a shot or something set up, what you can do is keep dribbling, obviously, keep trying to get towards his net, but instead of focusing on the ball, try to focus on the opponent and what he's doing and where he's positioned, as well as the amount of boost he has. So a weird thing I like to do is kind of pretend that I'm the opponent and what would I do if I was him. So instead of dribbling towards the opponent's goal and doing a flick whenever you can, try to calculate it a bit more and try to do it right before you think the opponent is going to challenge the ball. So I'll show you a quick example of what I'm trying to explain. <clears throat> so in this clip you can see that the opponent did do one fake challenge and I figured he would do a fake challenge here so I didn't get baited to flick the ball and in the back of my head here I'm thinking if I were the defender and I did a fake challenge and the opponent didn't do anything then I would probably go for the ball right afterwards because he probably wouldn't do anything again and I would get a successful challenge. So knowing that the defender was probably thinking that made me make the decision to pop the ball up because I figured this would be a real challenge coming up next. And I ended up successfully scoring a goal. So hopefully the way I explained that wasn't too confusing. Just try to make it a priority to look at the opponent more when you're playing 1v1s and base your decisions off what he is doing and where he is. Obviously you can't read the opponent 100% of the time but just try to at least rather than not paying much attention to him and only paying Paying attention to the ball. The fifth tip I have is just focus on getting a shot on net. What I'm about to talk about helped me so much in 1v1. So I know I watch a lot of Johnny Boy streams and a lot of his YouTube videos and I assume a lot of you do too. He's a really good caster, it's really fun watching his 1v1 show matches. So I remember I used to watch every single 1v1 show match he put out and I saw all these high level 1v1 players getting like the craziest 45 degree flicks, 90 degree flicks. They could generate an insane amount of power by getting these cool flicks that I couldn't really do, at least not that like, consistently. So obviously I wanted to be like these really good Good 1v1 players that could do these crazy flicks. And here's what would always happen. I would get the ball dribbled to around half field and then try a 45 degree flick that was really average and it would get saved. And I would try it again and again and again and it would just get saved and blocked every single time. And I didn't understand what I was doing wrong because I saw all the good players doing this and they were ranked really high on the leaderboard. And when I would try it I would lose game after game by only one or two goals but my rank went down a ton. So one day I mentally took a step back and analyzed my own gameplay and I watched one of my replays and I figured out I was just complicated it too much. Literally in 1v1s all you have to do is get any shot. Like if you have an open chance just shoot the ball on net even if it'll get saved. Even if you shoot it right at the goalie it's fine. So instead of every single attack you get trying to get really close to the goal and setting up some unstoppable flick, just get the most simple power shot and put it on net. And the key is it has to be in the air and you have to make the defender work for it. So all you have to do is get a shot on net that makes the defender use boost and it'll take him a while to recover from his save. So then from there you can take his boost and regain possession of the ball and start another attack. And once you do that two or three times the defender will be really low on boost. And if you keep throwing shots at him while he's low on boost he's bound to make a mistake and that's where it's easiest to score the goals. So to summarize this one just don't overcomplicate it by trying weird flicks. When you have the chance just take a normal power shot and keep applying pressure to the opponent. Just keep it simple. This tip really helped me rank up a lot. The sixth and final tip is really important and it's having a really good kickoff. I've beaten players that are way better than me just because I had a kickoff that countered theirs really well. So if you have a decent kickoff the majority of your goals can be kickoff goals and you can win the game just because of that. So I'm not gonna lie kickoff goals are a pretty dumb way to score and it's just kind of of a cheap way to get a goal, but in 1v1s you can seriously win games just from kickoff goals. So there are three things that can allow you to get a better kickoff than the opponent. The first one is being more goal side than the opponent, and that means placing your car directly in between the ball and the goal. So if your car is in a more central position than the opponent's, you probably win the kickoff and you might get a goal out of it. The second way to get a better kickoff than your opponent is getting the first touch on the ball. So if you get to the ball slightly before your opponent, you can get the first touch on it and move it a little bit, which allows you to set the initial direction of where the ball is going. The third tip I have for getting a better kickoff than your opponent is getting a smarter second flip on the kickoff. And by that I mean if the opponent is a little bit too 
far to the left of your screen, you need to flip to the right. And if the opponent is a little bit too far to the right of your screen, you need to flip to the left. I actually have a kickoff tutorial where I thoroughly explain this, and I also explain my exact kickoffs I do if you want to try my kickoff. So if you want to check out that kickoff tutorial, then click on the video right here, and you can learn step by step exactly how to do it. So those are the six tips I have for today to make you a better 1v1 player. So if you enjoyed the video or it helped you at all, make sure to hit the like button, and make sure you subscribe if you're new and want to see more content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video.